So participants, you go to participants. Yeah. And then you yeah, just click on that. Oh. Oops. And then. Oh. Now, yeah, yeah, hang on. And then. That's one of these other settings. Try try one of these other settings. Oops. Um, Chat, pause, room, stop recording, live, 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 streaming. Uh, I think it's... Oops. Go back to participants again. I know we didn't see anything, but usually it's... um. Oops. Uh, so, there's going to be some button... Whatever you've clicked that has a waiting room, mm. maybe go on the what click on that. No, there's one that you can get rid of the waiting room. Um, you know, like once it gets to the time thing, you just oh, get, so anyone who joins just they just come straight, straight in, yes. But you can make sure that they're muted when they join, right? Okay, yeah, that should be yeah. fine. Microphone's not working properly. Yes, it is. You're lying, son of a bitch. Uh, hang on, so with this, uh, yeah, general. maybe general, um, hang on, that's why I've got these in my pocket nowadays, um, yeah, I'm getting that way too, uh, it's really weird, yeah, you shouldn't have to, like, you should be able to just, not just admit all once, but you can get rid of so there's no waiting. <clears throat> yeah, well, so I've got to keep doing that because people keep turning up, so I've got to keep admitting uh, people no, for the whole time. There's so. a function where you can get rid of the right. waiting room, but once your meeting started, because I get you, you want a waiting room now. Yeah. Maybe it's an accessibility. Oh, I just can't remember what it is, bud. No, that's all right. Um, mm. Yeah, go down. Um, and you can also, with your chats, you can do them so they're either only come to you as host or they can, everyone can see it. So your chat, oh, if okay. wants to write comments, you can have it so it's restricted so that can only write to you. Ah. Oh. Or if you, you know, because sometimes if you get people writing to each other, having a separate conversation, it's... Yeah, right, gotcha. Probably won't happen here. No, but, no. Um, Background effects. Oh, we're on, so uh, I'll do it. Um, it might, I'm we'll screen. do it later. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to stream through here, and we're going to run it through my Facebook page. Cool. And then, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here yeah. we go. Preparing live. And where are you looking at that camera there? Got it. Uh, yeah, that one right there. So now we just need to admit all. <clears throat> and I think um, we're probably going live to air. So we want to make that bigger so we can't see ourselves in delay afterwards. Yeah. Because that gets all kinds of confusing. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. So I uh, happy Sunday, Sunday sessions. More than excited unexpectedly to be doing these as you guys know but it's a whole new initiative last week we were blessed with the presence of the great Wayne Bergeron for about 20 minutes which was awesome this week we have in the flesh all the way up from Melbourne getting out of the cold freezing Melbourne winter coming up to the delightful sunshine coast where it's raining and a bit chilly Mr Paul Williamson trumpet extraordinaire uh M M monash university um boss let's say that boss of music that, <laughs> <laughs> they the, the the boss is a saxophone player he's, he's not gonna he's not gonna see this um and pulls up for a week just to have a bit of a holiday and catch up so he flew in today and i've gone well guess what you're doing at seven o'clock <laughs> and he's graciously uh said He'll come along. Paul and I went to the Victorian College of the Arts together. We met. This will surprise you because we're such youthful looking people. 
that we start we, we met 30 years ago 1992 i got into college paul did you start that year i did you did start that I year yeah. yeah and i'm practicing i knew a, a f blue scale that was the extent of my harmonic knowledge and i'm in a practice room terrified to be in the big smoke being a country boy and this wonderful fellow walked in and said something along, along the lines of, oh, you're playing James Morrison licks. <laughs> and, and one of James was my biggest inspiration as a teenager growing up and, and playing the blues, loved it. And so Paul was dead right. And I've met this Bloomin' City bloke. You can tell the difference. Country job, classy city dude. <laughs> right? And we, um, we were the, the, the trumpet section for, for four years. I was I was there because I um, deferred second year. Had a blast. Welcome. We did. Thank you, my dear friend. And uh, <laughs> uh, hello to everyone there. Look, uh, great to see you. And I'm looking forward to having a having a chat to you. I'm going to have to I'm going to have to start though by correcting some of these very very warm introduction. But first of all, extraordinaire and my name have never been mentioned in the same sentence, and they <laughs> never will be. Um, but no, Greg and I have, have had the fortune uh, of knowing Greg for many years, and as you all probably know or can gather already, Greg's uh, just a, a warm, genuine, lovely guy who happens to also be a great musician and a, and a phenomenal, inspirational educator. Um, and we've shared that passion through. Um, I'm the convener of jazz at Monash University down in Melbourne at the School of Music, and uh, you know, we, again, we share that, that passion for students. Um, I definitely don't have all the answers. I'm an eternal lifelong student, but I love that too. I think that's part of being a great teacher. I love the trumpet and I also really passionate about um, music, all sorts of music, but jazz in particular. Um, How many albums have you put out? Well, if, if that was to suggest that the amount of albums has got anything to do with yeah, <laughs> someone's oh. quality, but no, I've, I've got a, a, a 11. Hang on, wait, I, I asked you this before we went online. I said, how many albums have you done, Paul? He goes, 12. So what's all this? You know, anyway, so he's recorded 12 solo al uh, with, with your bands, and that's just under his own name. That's not being on other albums. So 12 albums is a phenomenal, for, not, for anyone in any game, putting five, 12 albums out is extraordinary and most of it's original well it's all original music yeah yeah so well thanks and look uh, again i'm look anyone can record these days so i'm not going to talk that up except to say that um gee what a great learning process it is recording is just the same as we do gigs or we right. we teach students or we get lessons ourselves and it's all this you know it's a, it's a blast it's fun but it's a great you, you learn and you reflect and you think, gee, what, what a great journey this is. Right. You know? And we, we were just talking before over a bit of dinner. We've got 30 years experience that we can give to these students. And that's what I kind of try to bring to Mystery to Mastery and Windworks is Paul knows more than anyone. The trials and tribulations, the 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 methods that we used to work on at college like that first video in in the course there where i'm saying holding all the method books I'm not kidding we've tried them all <laughs> well uh, sorry right. I, I don't know the, the idea of this 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 time i don't want to talk too much i want to get everyone involved in the conversation but i must relay at least one funny story remember that i had that place in yeah, the North, hot day. Northcote. It was a hot day. I remember us black. 110 degrees. Trying, trying so hard with all these routines, hours of routine. Well, you've got to get stronger, Paul. You've got to be stronger. It's about strength. And bl blacking out. Like yeah. trying to, you know, trying to do it all, thinking that harder is, is the way to get stronger. And it's all about strength rather than, you know, I'd suggest. Um, it's not for me to put my opinion here, but you know, things put it like, away. I'll cut you down if you're co coordination and finesse <laughs> and those sorts of things. Um, it's certainly not brute power it's and not brute and, strength and, and trying to drive the truck with the steering wheel, right? You know? Like that's uh, but anyway, we've done it all wrong. I can I can vouch for Greg on that, and yeah. I'm still probably doing many things wrong, but um, I'm enjoying I'm enjoying the journey of you know over time still well you'd never stop learning trying to figure it and out the guys we get such as you guys all know and i recognize faces g'day paul g'day ron um brian hello uh we're all here because we want to develop 
none of us has figured it out, right? That's a constant learning thing. And as you guys will see at, at the, um, can you just remind me to admit people? There, there is a way for this. We're going to fix it afterwards, but I've got to admit people here. Um, uh, we're constantly developing our ideas and our approach. And you guys that are in the course know that I'm constantly trying to refine, come up with, how many different terms can you come up with an aperture? Milk spout. V for victory. X marks the spot. I wonder what it'll be next week. <laughs> right. we, we never stop coming up with ideas that simplify something. And I, I must say on that point that using the term milk spout, when people understand it, has made extraordinary uh, changes and differences to some people. Just the understanding of, so Paul won't know this story. I, I gave a lesson to a girl named Kate, who's a high profile uh, London Pops Orchestra mm -hmm. um, professor at Royal College of London. She goes, what's this you're talking about aperture corners, Greg? I said, oh, well, you know, we tend to pinch the middle of the lips down. Bobby Shoe, lips are the hindrance to the airflow. So my approach to overcome that is to approach the firming of the aperture from the sides in. Let's get the lips out of the way. Let them respond to the energy transfer from the from the horn back into the body. And so I use the finger because my teeth used to close. And Paul will remember when I was practicing, it fell out with my little, I've got it here actually, one of those little <laughs> yellow dental putty things to put between my teeth. We to did, stop. used to make fun of you, but no, you know, in hindsight, you were definitely if onto it. <laughs> they could see me now. Da, 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 da. Yeah, you, you cop shit when you're doing stuff that's against the, the, the grain. And we all know that. But we have to do it. We've got to think outside the box. I, I'll show you my mouthpiece mask in a minute. Um, my teeth had to close. So they want to be about, say, finger, fingernail apart, right? Then aperture corners in towards the finger. Slowly but surely, the wet bit on the inside of the lip, forward and out. As we're changing pitch, up towards the top lip without touching arching tongue aperture corners milk spout the aperture is getting smaller as we engage from the corners not the middle of the lip the middle of the lip needs to be responsive arch tongue does the peak train this um how come i need to turn on chat guys i tell you in about six months, I'll be good at this, <laughs> trying to figure out the messages and all this sort of stuff. Anyway, the Pete, I actually contacted Terry and said, I would love it if you could drill a hole down the middle so we could get some energy through. My concern with the Pete is the same as my concern with the pencil exercise. If you're doing it for the right reasons, there can be benefits. My concern is you put your, let's say this is the world's biggest pencil, right? What are you going to do when you try and grip that with the lips? You're going to clamp down and it's going to tighten the oscillator. And it also perpetuates the psychology of strength. Now, whilst there needs to be conditioning in the mouth, of course, it's not a strength issue, as we Paul, you know, I was just saying. When I was in Texas, I went around the universities and the high schools, and they're saying, Greg, how do we get stronger? And I kid you not, I said, are you freaking kidding me? You guys are the strongest players on the planet. You don't have to get stronger. You have to stop burning the pizza, as I was talking about last week. You've got to stop using all the energy trying to play so loud inefficiently. A more efficient body backing off and opening up is going to be a damn side louder than an active body forcing energy between lips that are tight. And we did it for years, right? So <laughs> the peat, if you've got it around and you've got the flat bit behind the teeth, uh, behind the lips, and you're pulling, 
no no problem there because the psychology isn't gripped down if you turn it around and it's a weight isometric exercise i can't stand it i can't stand it purely because of the psychology do muscles need conditioning yes can you get the conditioning you need for learning playing performing from just playing the instrument most definitely is that the peat or something like that useful when you're away you're not touching did you you brought your horn you didn't bring your horn I bought a mouthpiece you bought a mouthpiece good because we're gonna we're, we've got a gig on friday night i didn't tell you great um so <laughs> um well i forgot to tell you tell you and your neighbors about the you know six hours of practice i'm gonna do each day up here mate yeah. we're soundproof to you <laughs> they're used to it um do it out on the balcony they love right. it um so when you're away and you need to keep some conditioning by all means do something to activate the muscles you know jordan murray who used to work at monash university with paul he had a couple of wicked um we should ring him uh exercises i can't remember what he was they were real stretches but they were they were kind of active as well and his amazing trombone player one of australia's best trombone players and i'm gonna come next week or come tomorrow morning <laughs> for the us one and I'll, I'll i'll find out because generally we want to stay in condition when we've got breaks now i've got a a um a new if nigel's watching hello um he's about to head to hospital for a month right can't take his instrument but can take mouthpiece lead pipe uh visualizer right absolutely correct so i said to him at this stage because he's only just joined up he's got muscles everyone's got enough muscles to play the trumpet too much so the muscles respond to the messages from the brain so if the muscles are doing the wrong thing that means the messaging's wrong so we need to reconfigure the way that the thoughts happen. Now consider this, you, you, and it's, it's, it's different, but the same for an improviser. You get a musical message in your mind. And the minute that you think of that, whatever it is, it sends a, a message to the muscles and the sound in the mind, the pre-heard sound dictates how the muscles react. And I would suggest and we'll come back to this one, so you remind mm. me because I'll forget mm. that your improvisation is driven by or limited by the creativity of the ideas, the ability to think lyrically or whatever. Your your what you're playing is going to be, of course, limited by your imagination and or your technical ability or a degree of both. Or as Arnold Jacobs uh, said in Song and Wind, he'd he'd see the note on the page and he'd hear it in his head and he'd go where does that sound fit in the environment and put the sound there with no conscious this is kind of where a spiritual enlightenment of brass playing but you hear the sound and you create it with no conscious ram being used up to create that sound that's that's where we're all headed is to have no conscious awareness of the mechanics of playing and we are i've come up with this term recently hpv high performance vessel we are a vessel of a musical idea mm. high performance vehicles we want to be efficient and get the most energy and the most result from the least amount of work the complete and utter opposite to what we used to do mm. so we've got we've got the idea in the mind the musical message and hopefully the muscles respond accordingly so if you're in hospital for a month and you've been playing like I used to for years, roll that bottom lip over, choke the throat, and Paulie will go, oh. <laughs> you know, blow as hard as you can to get the result. One day he said, Greg, you should try this mouthpiece. You know the gig I'm talking about. It didn't go well. Hi, Reg Walsh, if, I, if you're watching. <laughs> right. Um, all effort, all effort, all effort, all force. So I'm getting people to hum. Hmm. Now, I'm not sure that Paulie's seen much of this stuff. You know, we, we live different lives, different worlds. But I'm saying that the lips, uh, I want the lips to interact with the air as if they're the vocal cords, mm -hmm. right? 
So if you sit here and hum, feel the energize the lungs. I don't like saying, saying breathing because, of course, breathing, there's 10 million breathing techniques and a lot of them can create confusion and overexertion. So I'm going to even energize the lungs through the nose. Then relax everything without falling off the chair. So I'm getting passive. Mm, ah, there's quite a bit of sound out there. I want the lips to interact with the with the air as if they're the vocal cords. So we go. Mm, ah, mm, ah, I was thinking in B flat. Mm, ah, mm, ah, mm, and there's no. You can tell when I start talking. There's no let go because there was no engagement at the first place. It was pull the pull the bow back and release the energy. We're converting energy into sound. This has already got air, air in it. We're just energizing the air and the energy that we're creating. There's no blow. What psychology does that set when I do this? Active blow. No, release from behind the tongue. I saw a particular person go, I've seen this lesson blowing at a tissue. I hate it. <laughs> Quite an aggressive video, if I do say so myself. Completely missing the point. If you sit there and energize the lungs, any breath bigger than to sustain life is excess energy. Any breath that is bigger than what is required to sustain life is excess energy. We have two options. Relax the body and convert that energy into sound or engage muscles that we don't need in a 110 degree practice room and almost kill ourselves and black out, right? So we want to convert the energy from the excess breath into sound. Let's not use the muscles that we don't need. So when you consider that, the tongue's merely in the way. We're releasing the tongue. I Because Paul's here, I just spent some time setting up and I've hidden my bow and arrow. Can you see? Oh, there it is. Can you grab my bow and arrow? And arrow. is there an arrow there? There is. Awesome. Sweet. Now, while, while I'm grabbing that, we've got a comment here. So let me have a look. Um, I appreciate your direction about Pete. I have one and I've used the flat end to try and achieve better control of the more corners of my milk spout. See, that's perfect psychology. Please, everyone, read the chat there. Um, there are many times during the day when I can't access or reasonably use my Pete. Are there isometric exercises to fine tune the control? and the strength of my corners of my aperture. It's cool, isn't it? Yeah. So what are I've your thoughts? Thought, but it's more of a comment to you and, and everyone out here. Um, not because I want to add in another term, but it just reminds me of that idea, getting back to the original point about, you know, this um, misconception that, you know, about this constant gain to be stronger, stronger. Athletic with, trumpet playing. Yeah. Um, it, it reminds me of, you know, with a lot of sports and physicality where they talk about the key is to keep good form. Yeah. And it, from what you're describing, it's like once once things are in place and the bits that need to be active or, or energised or engaged are working and the bits that don't aren't, um, I, I, I'm, my question is, is really the big challenge from there is trying to maintain that form. Yeah. Hold that. Uh, according to what you're doing absolutely on the instrument. And, and that's the real challenge you know that's the refined thing that makes the difference between an amateur and a professional um how much energy is required for a long loud high note versus a entry to my funny valentine at pianissimo below the stave so we need to constantly we don't have to think about it so much with our voice do we i'm gonna yell i'm gonna whisper just comes naturally right and if I want to sit here, I sort of on this point, I'll digress a little bit. But but can you? This could get a bit funny. Can I have your hand for a second? Yep. I had a lesson with a professional um, singer who's now playing trumpet, and of course, as the singer who was originally in Cats and on the West End and everything, ah, and everything's active. And when I did this and went, ah. And I'm changing and the body's not engaged and that's passive and there's a lot of sound going on. He thought I was a ghost. He said, that's not possible. <laughs> You're not alive because you need to activate to change pitch. What do you reckon he was doing when he was on the trumpet? Blowing the absolute house down. So it's all about psychology. And then <laughs> harks back to what we're talking about with our friend uh, in hospital for a month. 
it takes a bit of energy to create new neural pathways. How do we do it? Belief, understanding in the system, repetition of pure processes, drills. You don't need a trumpet to learn how to play the trumpet. In fact, Arnold Jacobs, quote, um, the instrument stimulates old habits, puts us onto the 1.0 pathway. We're trying to create 2.0 pathway. So as you say, and Paulie, one of my mantras, I've got a bunch of mantras. One of them is I want the lips to interact with the air as if they're the vocal cords. Another one is um, we want to eliminate any unnecessary or involuntary muscular activation. As you said, if we don't need it, let's not use it because you overactivate muscles and all of a sudden, oh, what have I done? Oh, here we go. Sorry. I'll get a producer one day. <laughs> um, yeah, all of a sudden we're, we're overactivating and the whole term burn the pizza is a, a student last week had a pizza next door and it was undercooked and he goes, the, the oven wasn't hot enough. And I, I refer to energy as combustion sometimes. And then he came in the next day and started playing low C's, doing the Singing C series, loading up and blowing the heck out of it. I'm saying, what are you doing? Too much combustion. Stop burning the pizza, right? We, we, it's just, it's, it's um, natural. It's the psychology of you, you teach a, a kid to play golf. Ben, we just had dinner with my girlfriend and a uh, wonderful son, Ben. Teaching golf, what, is, what does everyone want to do? Belt the ball as hard as possible. What am I trying to teach myself to do? Hit it as slowly as possible. Let the wrists stay loose. And interestingly, um, if you've seen the ITG presentation, I use the term release with, with the bow and arrow here. Primitive trumpet playing. Primitive people throw spears. Active, forward, push. Modern trumpet players take the breath that they need and release. We can all agree, like blowing up a balloon, you don't have to force the air out of a balloon. You don't have to, you know, throw the arrow here. And Zen in the Art of Archery, release at the highest tension. So I'll get you all to consider. We pull the bow back. Where's the highest amount of energy? At the highest tension. Release at the highest tension subconsciously. We don't even know when that is. In the Zen in the Art of Archery, he talks about a, a droplet going down a leaf. And it bends and it bends and it bends and then it falls. When does it fall? All right? We don't know. At the highest tension when it needs to. And we can all agree the longer I hang on to this, the less energy there is. All right? So we've got the release. And what was the other, um, oh, the other golfing term? I've had a mental blank. The release and... Oh, isn't that dumb? Isn't that dumb? Anyway, so all I need to do is move my finger here after a body that's stretched. Relax the body. <laughs> move the tongue, move the finger. Did I get you? How's your nose? <laughs> <laughs> and the arrow flies. So we don't need to activate. We don't need to throw the spear. We need to breathe and release. And that's what... Do you we know let the, go cruel, the cruel thing about this that I'm hoping everyone hasn't experienced, but unfortunately I'm sure we have, is that um, just like with the arrow or any other metaphors or analogies, um, you can do it other ways. Oh, absolutely. And that's the cruel thing with trumpet playing. You can be doing it all wrong, and if you're, if you're not in, in tune or reflecting on, you know, or, or seeking to maybe find you know the minimal kind of energy you can see how you know, you know you need to use to do something um yeah you can do it wrong for years well uh, and have have done it wrong for years and uh and i'm sure everyone's got certain aspects in their playing whether it's you know registers or dynamics or flexibility or all, all these challenges we have on brass instruments in particular you know, trumpet. Absolutely. Guess, um, you, you, you can do things. You can get away with it. You can get away with it. Um, but that's, it's, it's, it's cruel because, you know. Well, the, the thing is, and you're dead right, and that's why I get looked at as a bit of a bloomin' nutcase at times, but have a look at the demographic with the, with the exception of Patrick. Hey, Patty, how are you, my friend? 
We haven't met before, but I certainly know the name and it's good to see you put a face to the name without offending anyone. But from the people that I can see, I suspect you're the youngest here. I, th I think I might be, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so why is it that the general demographic of people that come to me is 30, 35, 40 going forward? Now, for those of you that saw Wayne talk last week, he said, we can't keep doing it. I'm, you want a career going on into the into our you know 60s and 70s and we've got some some blooming gurus that you know we've known all our lives that are playing into their 60s and 70s and it's eventually you, the body says no right so we need but to even sorry to, sorry right. to interrupt right. but i was just going to say this and maybe this some of you can relate to this even if it's a short-term thing or if it's a hobby thing i have many years of thinking like getting quite down thinking oh this is just so hard or, or this is exhausting and 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 even worse for me something you mentioned earlier about you know um over time trying to eradicate um the distractions and quiet in the mind so that what you hear in in sense of audiation hearing the music that in the end the ultimate goal is to hear something and you know be able to articulate or execute your musical ideas now when all of these physical when you're doing it really hard mm. or difficultly mm. um you just can't do that and so it's not even about so it's definitely about what you're saying it's not just sustainability of having a long career it's just even if someone's just begun and it's a hobby or you've been playing it's exhausting isn't it it's hard work and a lot of people give up because of the fight and you get they don't enjoy you get it. consumed by the physicality mm. rather than what I would suggest is the end game, which is we're all, we're doing all of this so that we can play music and get the joy from it at, right. at any level. Yeah, absolutely. Um, otherwise, <laughs> it's sort of it, it, we do see brass players who it sort of becomes almost like a. Um, I'm not saying there's necessarily anything wrong with this, but it's it's a um, it's almost like a gym workout. But but then at the end you've got to say, but what's this for? got to be for music making we all know trumpet players that are more caught up with range and technique than music we can say that out loud there's someone that we know that the music is secondary to the can play high and loud and that's impressive and look at me because i can play high and loud <laughs> that's not what it's about Actually, at all. It, is, it is fair to say that we we all want both like uh, right we all want to be in command of the instrument and, and to be all over the instrument so of course it's not a uh a, I'm not suggesting you're saying this, but for anyone who's thinking, oh, I'm actually really into that. Look, we are too. We want to be able to. It's got to be about the music. But it's about the music. You can, you can hear ego. You can hear ego. And ego, for me personally, confidence is one thing. Ego is a different thing. And it takes away from the musicality. And if your ego and identity is based on having a range, and the music is secondary, you can hear that. So it's not pleasurable to listen to. Um, anyway, that being that's very judgmental. I'm sorry. Each to their own. If you love picking the horn up and hawking into loud notes and high notes, yeah. go nuts! <laughs> right? But don't forget, why are you doing it? Why does someone pick up the trumpet and go, I want to play high notes? Trust me, it's legitimate desire. Why the heck did yeah. I work on everything that I did? I reckon there's, sorry, I'm doing a lot of interrupting, but please just, I don't want to, maybe you know, I, I let us down a, a path got the gaffer here. Tape here. And, yeah, yeah. I don't want to misconstrue, have what I said misconstrued. I no. think there does actually need to be a joy in tackling the technicality of the instrument and finding real enjoyment out of that, whether, you know, whatever you're playing. Yeah. It's just, just knowing that, the ultimate goal is when you have command of that, and that could be a long journey that you try and conquer, that it'll help you, you know, play music. Well, as well, look, let's face it. You and Scotty Tinkler's come to mind. Scott Tinkler is one of the most incredible trumpet players you're ever going to hear. And his music is beyond what you're generally going to hear. And Paulie and I are very, 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 very close friends with him and have been for many, many years. And anyone here is not going to sit around and play hot cross buns for 25 years and get satisfaction from it. <laughs> Eventually, hot cross buns or 
whatever is going to become quite boring. Mary had a little lamb. So we've got uh, a musical desire to express ourselves. At the end of the day, we're a vessel for our musical idea. Everyone's got a different musical idea, you know, and they're all valid. But we're going to want to develop and, and see this ties into what I was sort of getting at with you before is over the years, would you say that your improvisations were dictated by technical limitations or did you use your musical um, sort of ideas to push the development of your technique or is it a bit of both? That's a, that's an out there. No, I think it, it definitely a bit of both, but I think there's times when I've realized many times when I've realized my trump, my trumpet playing and, and the efficiency and the ease isn't probably the right word, but, you know, trying to basically learn to play the instrument better and um, not fight it as much has been something that I needed to address so that I could start to realize the, you know, the ideas that I'm hearing. Yeah. Um, and then at other times, as you're saying, you know, you hear an idea and you work on that and that actually helps improve your trumpet playing. Um, but there does, but fundamentally there comes a point where if you're, if you're fighting the instrument and you're doing it all way more difficult than you need to, because you can do it. You can be a professional musician and be really fighting the instrument. And I know absolutely that's we've had, you work with a number of musicians. I won't name names. Um, who are high profile, serious, heavy hitter musicians that we look up to. Yep. Um, and you can do that. But the point is, as I mentioned before, who wants to do it harder than they need to? Right. It, it's actually physically exhausting. But uh, part of my journey is I actually found it mentally got me down at times. Right. Yeah. You know, thinking oh, I haven't got it. This is way too hard. Oh, it must be something to do with the gear I'm using. I went on the mouthpiece safari, the horn safari. <laughs> I still do a bit. Um, but, and then you know, I'd practice harder. It'd be more hours, hours and hours of practice. Yeah. Getting worse. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on. I really haven't got Reinforcing it. Reinforcing poorly 1.0. Yeah. What yeah. am I doing wrong? <laughs> I, um, I haven't got it. I haven't got it again, you know, and just uh, carefully, just. I, I remember get, driving home from some gigs saying that's I'm going to quit. <laughs> like really, I mean, um, and I and it got to a point where I thought, no, nah, this is, you know, they, hang on, it, it can't be. It, it's it's a challenge, and it certainly takes some deep consideration, and you need guidance. But it can't be. The answer isn't, you know, get stronger and muscle. Right. muscle we it tried out more, that, which which are tried, yeah. So um we both got to that point i'm done we're working too hard if we don't fix it and you guys that follow mystery to mastery in, in windworks i say it in there you get to a point where you go i can't do it anymore i'm 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 cooked i'm gonna give up and then eric clay said to me practice like a virtuoso which obviously means like you're alluding to i'm smart enough to go right practice like a virtuoso let's uh, reinterpret that translate it and go right get serious about it it doesn't mean go and practice the same thing 10 hours a day the thing that you're practicing two hours a day that's not working for you go and do it 10 hours a day that doesn't seem to make much sense we did it mate. No, we yeah, did it for but, years yeah. so and this this becomes right into why i'm doing what i'm doing the dudes that can make it work they can make it work and if they get through their whole life and they make it work there's no problem my thing is, there's no problem until there is a problem. <laughs> they make it work until they can't make it work, right? And then, so that goes into, right, the brain wants to find the most efficient way to do something. So hence the term, the concept of the invitation. And this is all new to Paulie. You guys are aware of my terminology, but, but Paulie won't be. But basically, if you do any kind of drill, with the mind in the right spot. And it's an invitation for the body to do something on its own that takes no RAM, no conscious energy. So we walk around and, and Dan Quigley did a video and he's gone, he used to walk around with the visualizer. That's got a feeling attached to it. It's easy. They're all invitations. 
for the body. That's what I want to feel like when I'm playing. And then you pick up the horn and you play and you go, oh, yeah, oh, oh. oh, hang on. There's the point of difference right there. There's the error. So the part of the brain that you're training through a drill is living the efficient process. The reality or the assessment when you actually play, you're practicing when you're playing is an assessment. You're not learning when you're actually playing you're discovering where your wiring's at. What messages am I being sent? It's at that point when you go to execute whether you know whether the wiring's correct or not. And so you either make an error and you adjust or you get the desired result and you store it more myelin on the new pathway, <laughs> okay? So when the brain senses, it has to make sense. It has to be logical. It has to be understandable. So when my friend Nigel's in the hospital and he's going milk spout, V for victory, X marks the spot. There's the energy. How much sound, Paulie, can I make with that? All right, let's see what happens. You're never going to play a louder low C than that. No. Right? Yep. Right now, can you grab me that horn over there? I didn't warn him that he was going to be prodding me on <laughs> live. Can you whack your? Oh, I'd love to, man. What happened down there? Not much. Not, not well, much. Come on. Where? Nothing was the right answer. Yeah. Nothing is going on. Nothing. Up. Dang. I just have to go and get the edit. <laughs> we'll just edit this live. Right. So the psychology is what we're working on. You can sit there and go, aperture corners in, arch the tongue. How are we going for time? Because it's a real short one tonight. We've only got an hour because I've got some of the, anyone who's watching, there are slots on my Sunday night, Monday morning, where you can have a 10, sort of 15 minute free assessment chat, whatever. It's on the site. Book one. Come and say good day. Um, once we understand the process that we're working on, then it's just a matter of error correction. Now, I put an error video on today with Andrew Huberman, um, amazing neurologist. It's on the forum. It's on the homepage of the website. Please watch it. Everyone, put your hand up and say, Greg, yes, I'll watch it. I'm looking. Please, hands up. I'm not seeing hands. All right, good. Thank you. Oh, Craig, you can watch it twice. Um, it's really cool. It's, it's everything that I think spoken by a guy who knows how it works. I don't know how it works. He talks about all the different brain bits and epinephrine and acetylcholine and dopamine and myelin. and It's fascinating stuff. The brain wants to find the most easy way to do something. This is why the focal dystonia people are hunting me down. Because what can I do? What can I sometimes do? What can't I do? Some people cannot walk into the room without feeling anxiety before you get to the practice room. I've been there, right? So if you've got anxiety about entering the practice room, well, there's a lot of issues that need to be addressed there. Then you come in and you have to understand so basically this session the other day, I can say Julie's name again because we're putting Focal Dystonia Musician website together and we're filming and we're doing this stuff. And we were having a chat as we do. We do about four to 10 hours online every week. And when you really consider the fact that anything that any muscle does, the, the terminology is generally muscles are dumb. Muscles aren't dumb. They're very obedient unless there's something wrong with the physically wrong with the muscle itself, they will obey. They will do what they're instructed to do by the messaging. Right? So I'm saying, imagine that you've got, and this is for everyone, not just dystonia, but for in our case, it was really important. But imagine on this wall here, there's 10,000 um, safety deposit boxes. 
and you've got one key and that key opens one of those boxes now we don't know which one it might be number one it might be number ten thousand or one in between you don't want to randomly go around and check that box and then that box and then that box and that box and all of a sudden you've checked that box twice and that box twice and you've got to have strategy so you start up the top and say and work across and then back and back and you go to put the key in your key has three elements to it you've got to understand well firstly you've got to understand the result that you're trying to achieve what does it sound like what does it look like what does it feel like what are you trying to achieve right how does it work how does the system work and you have to believe it because if you don't believe it there's confusion if there's confusion there's doubt you can't have confidence and doubt at the same time so you need to understand what you're trying to work on how it works right what you're trying to work on how it works what does the result look like the third one is is my body physically capable of achieving the task the outcome is anything broken i've got a broken arm and i want to play tennis i'll just do it left-handed no problem <laughs> um if the body's in fine working order you know what the outcome looks like and you know the process of getting there there's the key so then all you need to do is go through the error boxes those safety deposit boxes are all just errors you put the key in doesn't even go in one notch there's 12 let's say there's 12 what are they called on a key can anyone tell do you know but the grooves teeth are they teeth right there's 12 teeth on a key put it in the first one doesn't go in put it in the second one doesn't go in put it in the third one doesn't go in put it in the fourth frequent one I've only got 9,996 to go and I'm getting frustrated already. And the, the, the cortisol, the adrenaline starts flowing in the body and the frustration levels build, the anxiety. Fifth one, oh crap. Sixth one, seventh one, error, 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 error. That's not what I want. So the brain chemicals are going berserk. Ah! Guess what? There's the glue. That's how we learn new stuff. Those chemicals, that anxiety, that that's the cocktail for neuroplasticity. And because what you've got, you've got the picture in the mind, which I call the portrait of the outcome, the mental portrait, you can refer to it. I know what the outcome looks like, but then I've got the reality of what's going on. Oh, I'm trying to put the key in, it's not working. I'm trying to play this note, it's not working. I'm trying to hit the ball straight down the middle. I'm putting it in the damn trees, right? The frustration builds. You you know what you want to achieve, and you've got the reality of what's happening. But it doesn't matter because you know what the desired outcome looks like. You know how the system works, and you know that you're capable of doing it. So then, if your mind's in the right spot, you can go, "Cool, I know I'm going to figure it out." The bigger the point of difference, the easier it is to learn. The stranger something it is, the easier it is to learn. Oh, can't play like that, Greg. Yes, you can learn the feeling. I understand the system. Of course I can play like that. I want the lips to interact with the air as if they're the vocal cords. So then you go along. We get 10, 20, 30. These teeth aren't sharp enough. Bang, bang, bang. All of a sudden, you're about to chuck the damn keys. And this is where people go wrong. Negative frustration versus positive frustration. Let's leverage the frustration because all of a sudden you get to that next safety deposit box and you put the key in and it goes in. <gasps> goes in the second tooth, go <gasps> the third one goes in. Dopamine starts being released, sending a message to the brain. We're on the right path, right? And it starts to put myelin on this thing. We're getting closer, right? Fourth one, it stops. Oh! <laughs> Ah, right. So the, but what, what, what have we done out of the 12 keys, the 12 teeth, three of them are right. So we have to send the message. That was good. People don't do this. You get a little bit right, but the whole thing doesn't sound right. The process was good, but the sound wasn't there. So it's an error. No, it's not. Don't confuse the brain. You're telling, I think I mentioned last week, the concept of the no C. I'm going to play no notes. 
You've got low notes, high notes, and no notes. I can have someone sit here and go, for three hours, practice no notes, because the process is perfect. And I know how the system works. I know my body's not broken. I know what the outcome sounds like. And when you least expect it, where did that come from? Coffee moment, go put the kettle on, have a coffee and think about it. So we go along and ultimately six teeth go in, then frustration, seven teeth go in, frustration, no teeth go in. Oh, got to go back to the start of the cycle of teeth. Let's start all over again. One teeth, two teeth, eight teeth. We're getting close. Do we hear nine? Should have been an auctioneer. I'm on a roll here, Paulie. Then eventually you know that that key is going to unlock one of those 10,000 safety deposit boxes. And all of a sudden you put it in, it goes all the way and you turn it and it opens. And there's the answer. There's the gold. There's the result. Well done. You understood. You believed. You knew you'd get there. You did it. You did it. You went through the tough times and the good times and eventually you found it. Now, the problem with dystonia is the key isn't I understand what the goal is. I understand how the system works. And I know that my body's capable of doing it. It's don't react. Don't do this. It's a key of don't. So I said to Jules the other day, I've got a name for a chapter. It's called don't, don't, do, do. <laughs> don't, don't. Don't do this, Greg. Don't slice. And I'm saying to her, imagine if I walked up to the 10th tee and I'm thinking, don't slice it, don't hook it, don't duff it, don't miss it, don't swing too hard, don't forget to keep your head down. What do you reckon is going to happen? <laughs> you can't be. What do you think about where's the ball going to go? It's a little bit like the one of those um, mini Yoda quotes of... Uh... I don't, can't remember the words exactly, but it's don't try, do or do not, or along those lines. Right. So. Remember you cannot, Paul. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cannot remember. <laughs> right. It's so true, guys. So when you're thinking about developing, and, uh, you know, I recognise the names. I, I, I don't know who's where. By the way, if you are a Windworks subscriber watching this, things are changing big time. You're going to be asked to sign up to the Q3 2022 forum. It's separate to the Windworks forum. It's a private members forum of which you have three days from the time I send the email to hop on the forum and go, hi, my name's such and such. I play such and such. I've been playing for so long. Don't worry, I'll send the emails out about this. It's a community that I'm getting involved in more proactively. I've had this course going for a while and I've left people alone. And whilst people are getting results and enjoying it, we're stepping it up a bit. So I'm going to be on the forum with the third quarter because then next quarter, there's going to be fourth quarter next year, first quarter. We're all going to be going through the process at the same time. I want everyone on there or I'm organising a fines system and it's going to go to a charity, which my girlfriend's boss is involved in an amazing charity. And I'll give you be very transparent and show you all about it. But we're going to get results, all of us. I'm making sure of it now, <laughs> right? So we're going to be in, hi, my name's uh, Paul, and I live in an island which is really high up north of Scotland, and it's really cold. <laughs> and I, I, I teach singing and I teach choirs, and I'm at Windworks because blah, 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 I'm having these issues, and we all get to know each other, and we talk about the issues, and we share our information, and I'm going to be going through the course and pull the pages apart in real time so we can look at it and go, how's this one going? Paul, how are you going with this one? Ron, how's that one going? Patrick, Brian, right? I, I want to build this. Uh, how are we going for time? Ah, nine minutes, good. Um, so when I send the email, please just go across. I'm going to have my, hi, my name's Greg. I played trumpet. I run a website. My favorite gig was this. And I like playing golf left-handed because I'm crazy. Um, and so we've, we've said that. 
I, what about the um, uh, Brad had a good question. He's just looking on the website and can't find where to sign in, sign up for the chat with you. Your free, free little. Oh, that's. Is that on the website? That's that's this one now. Uh, it's on the forum, and maybe I should. And it's on the notifications at the start. If you open your notifications, is that for tomorrow, Brad D? Uh, if it's for tomorrow, it's it should be on the forum, on the notifications when you sign in. If it wasn't there, go back go back to the dashboard, and open the previous notifications, and it's got the Zoom link for tomorrow, the US one. Um, and yeah, or it's on on my Facebook page as well. This is streaming to the Facebook page. Um, are there any questions? Guys, because I know I recognise the names, obviously, and, and I've just been yak, 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 yakking, and Paulie and I just having a good old chin wag and catch up. And normally I'd go for longer. So I've got to, I've got to think about this because going for the right time for the UK and stuff, but I've also got my 10 minute chats. And at the moment we finish at eight and the chats start at eight, but I might make it an hour and a half. So I've stuffed that up a bit. Um, work in progress. But is there anything, has anyone got a topic? uh that they would like discussed feel free to turn your mic on and and ask um because the whole essence of this and this patrick oh uh, yeah uh greg um i i'm here in uh brisbane so pretty close oh right oh uh, ripper um, yeah so um yeah i i play uh i went through queensland con and stuff i play in the navy band here and teach a bit um oh. but uh you guys yeah. know each other you know paul have you no 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 uh, paul he was air force for a while so. there you go hey yeah <laughs> um yeah but I, i've been dealing with some um some playing problems uh sort of there's playing problems but then there's also the dystonic stuff okay um and i just i really wanted to say that like having this like community where you where you're openly like and you can see pros out there like having wayne on last week like you know, it's kind of surreal, but openly discussing the 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 sort of uh, issues in playing rather than feeling so alone uh, really helps with that sort of dystonic stuff. Absolutely, and, mate. And then your actual stuff like deals with the playing stuff already, but like the sort of emotional side of the dystonic stuff, I just wanted to say I really appreciate it. And um yeah, yeah. Hopefully I can come up and meet you on the sunny coast one day. Oh, please do, man. You know, we're an yeah. hour and a quarter away and I'm here. I teach in my studio and I'd love to meet you. And by all means, anytime, come on up and that would be terrific. Look, it's really important. My my stuff actually isn't about trumpet. I I If I had have found trumpet easy, which I definitely didn't, it was a complete opposite and Paulie will vouch for that then I would have been doing something else because I go, oh, that's cool. I've sorted that. And I would have put my energy into something else where, because it just was, how come he can do that? And I can't. And when I say that, I'm talking about hearing Maynard Ferguson and Lee Morgan and Morrison and all these cats when I was younger, why can't I do that? Right? So then my ideas of teaching have been honed around the trumpet experience. But as you can see, the whole golfing thing was I need a challenge. I want the brain to be putting the way that I think about things into another action. And the dystonia thing is, as I said earlier, and Patrick, you must be the same, is that there's something in the way that I teach, break it down and try and explain it and recognise what messages the brain sending that resonates with people with dystonia, which is really hip. And I was originally thought when I was in the States, everyone was telling me, um, it's from overexertion, inefficiency. And I've left going, oh, okay. And then I got back and said, oh, you've got this dystonia thing. People are playing inefficiently and they get this condition. And it's so far from the truth. <laughs> right? It's so complex and the so one deep. One <laughs> right, yeah. right. So yeah. the things that Julie and I have on video, right, you, you, you will love. It will shock people learning the trumpet all this stuff about learning some new skills on the trumpet that's piece of piece yeah, serious yeah. it's it's nothing compared to the deep closed eyes visualization reassurance the microscope absolute yeah. microscope 
to recognize the slight, I call it the shadow. I don't know whether you've seen that little video that we put out, but I can suggest, hey, Patrick, can you um, grab your instrument, put your mouthpiece in it? And there could be this shadow turn up at the door. Mm -hmm. I already know what's going to happen. And there's this fear, embarrassment, shame. And I already had a mini reaction by you even suggesting it. Where do you, where, where do you react physically? If you don't mind me asking, is it? Um, well, then there was a slight pause in my breath then, which is right. far less of a reaction than it used to be. Right, uh, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the whole so. cycle of T's, the whole concept of the cycle of T's is the very first element is stillness. Mm. Can you sit with your eyes closed with a clear mind? and a body that's chilled, relaxed, nothing engaged that's not necessary. From there, we start to do the movements required, energize the lungs. And that's why I breathe through the nose for a demonstration of an exercise, because as you would very well know, a mouth movement can create triggers and reactions. So let's eliminate everything. That's what I was gonna to talk to you before. There is no limit to what you should try. With with jewels, this is not a gimp outfit, Paul. Well, I, it's. I would have liked to have seen you wearing that on the plane. Today. That would have been great. <laughs> I needed to get Julie to be able to because there's a there's a lip reaction to the to the rim, obviously a mouth and lip reaction, and then trying to get a breath on board. So for ages, I was saying you need to be able to get the mouthpiece on your lips for a longer amount of time, independent of the movement of the mouth, independent of the breath. I said, you've got to go and get some elastic and we're going to put a mouthpiece through it and we're going to strap it on your head. <laughs> We've done all sorts of crazy things. I said this six months ago and it sort of didn't happen, didn't happen, didn't happen. And eventually it got to the six month mark when I'm going, I need you to have the mouthpiece on your lips all the time. And I went out into my kitchen and I got some gaffer tape and a couple of hair ties because my fiscal anti hairdresser COVID haircut um, allows me to have some hair ties. And I came in and she'd gone off to get this piece of elastic. And uh, Paul, you never expected to see this at a trumpet forum and it might not work tonight either. There's no reaction, Patrick. Mm. What have we done? We've eliminated some of the cued some of um, the some of the triggers. Yeah. It has been the most helpful thing for her after we've been doing this for three years. She's up walking around that she's desensitized to the touch of the mouthpiece now. The reaction in the trap is gone, but there is still, even with that on, she's got her elastic and the mouthpiece through it and the mouthpiece comes up and just at the point when it contacts, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. The moment that that lead pipe touches the mouthpiece and we're off to the races. I could talk about this stuff for hours. That will be, there's time for that coming up. I actually have to go. Um, I've got a live and an hour's not long enough, so I'll fix this. Guys, please. So there's going to be fines. If you don't get and onto the forum when I send it across within three days, I'm sending you a fine and everyone's going to see it. It's going to be 10 or 20 bucks to the charity. It's all going to be transparent. I'm as cautious about charities as anyone. We're here to get results. I'm going to make sure you do. Then every month you have to start a topic on the forum. If you don't do one in a month, you get a fine. It goes to the, <laughs> to the... I'm serious about this. We are, I'm involved. I want you guys to get results. For the last three years, I've been building it, putting it out there, seeing how it's working and just letting it be because I don't want to get in people's faces, but I do want people to get results. So a bit of accountability is on its way, folks. How to go from having a, a few subscribers to none? <laughs> Say what I just said then, but I'm demanding results. We've got to be accountable and I'm going to help you in every way that I can with any problems but you've got to put it out there as well. Patrick, by all means, give as little or as much as you like because people need to know about this condition. Mm. It's stigmatized. It's the, the seeds of it are everywhere. Like, right. That's people, the crazy thing. 
it needs to be out there and I'm trying my damn best to try and spread the word about this stuff. So we've got, let's talk, my friend, and I'm happy to help out however I can. Um, we do have to go, folks. We'll wrap it up. Thank you. So please get onto the forum. We need some fodder for next week. Um, please watch the video about um, errors with uh, uh, Andrew Huberman. It will blow your mind, not your chops, as I said at the ITG thing. Um, if you're not a member of WinWorks, please come along. Please come along. That's all I can do. Paul Williamson, you are one of the great humans of the planet. Thank you for agreeing to sit here and Thanks, listen to mate. me. I'm, le I'm learning as much as anyone. So uh, bravo, Greg. And Thank you, mate. Good on you. Good on you. Awesome. Great. Thanks, guys. See you again. All the best. See ya. Take it easy.